Okay, I'm going to do a video today on how to set the overhead, uh, which is the valves and the injectors on a, this is a 290 small cam I'm working on. This engine has the non-top stop injectors. Um, just want to try to make it a, a, as clear as possible on how this can be done. It's, it's not real complicated, but I just want to show you some things that you got to watch for that can make it really complicated. Okay. A lot of the stuff on the small cam and big cam are exactly the same except there are differences in the actual adjustments so you got to watch for that. But we want to look at the differences in between inner base circle and outer base circle. I always hear people talk about inner base circle, outer base circle, um, adjustments on a Cummins. And uh, this is about the best diagram I could find to explain simply how a Cummins works. Um, what we have is a cam driven injector. So we have the camshaft. This is our injector follower. This is push rod tube, rocker arm, injector. This cam is not shaped like uh, most most cams, and I'm not a very good artist here, but most cams are kind of a little bit egg shaped. They have a big circle here and then they have a big lobe. Well these cams are shaped a little bit different. Uh, we have a, a big circle out here, that's your outer base circle, and then you have a smaller circle here. Of course they trans, you know, there's a little bit of a ramp from the small one to the big one. But basically, when you're talking about inner base circle, you're talking about the low point on the cam, which would also be when the intake is, or when the injector is all the way up or open, when the push rod tube, or the, the top of the rocker arm would be up. When we talk about outer base circle, that's when this roller is sitting on, more like right here, where it's sitting on the, uh, it, it's any the outer base is anywhere from injection through the power stroke all the way to the end of the exhaust stroke. That's supposed to be an E and a P. So anything between injection, which is occurs about here, the cam's turning this way. You have the injector shut and. This is where the injector adjustment is critical. Now on the non-top stop, which is what I'm going to talk about today, uh, it's what I have to work on, it's what I'm looking at today. It looks a lot like this injector right here. Uh, whenever we look at adjusting this, uh, there's two, two methods to set this injector. The one I'm going to use today is the inner base circle, or IBC. It's also in the book, the, ba the dial indicator method. Um, I'm not sure. I know some of the big cam engines may use the non-top stop injectors. If your engine has a non-top stop injector, this method will work. Um, this is a diagram of two different, basically if you pull your valve cover off and you can see this spring and you can actually, you know, there's, you can see a couple of coils and then there's a sleeve here. This is a non-top stop. Okay, you could actually, when the rocker arm's out, you can actually pull that plunger out of it. This is the newer or the, the top stop injector. And I have been told the preferred method to set these is the OBC or the outer base circle method. But if your if your injector looks like this one, or kind of like this one, the method I'm going to show you will work. Okay, we're going to look at adjusting valves and injectors, and 
The method I'm going to use is called the dial indicator method. Um, and I'm going to walk you through that. What we're going to do, I mean, this part of the book, it, it explains to you how to get started. But on the front of the engine, on the accessory drive, this is uh, where you're going to find your timing marks. It looks, I mean, the picture here is pretty good. And I'll show you on the actual truck where you can find these marks. Uh, they're usually on the... They're usually marked, this is your fan belts, this is your water pump belts. It's usually on the water pump pulley is where you'll find it. On mine it has an A and a mark, and then on the back side a mark, and then on your uh, engine cover, your timing cover on the front of the engine, there is a pointer. You don't have to be exactly on these, I mean, you. You get in that ballpark within eighth inch, quarter inch, you're close enough. But what you'll find on here is A, B, C, and then there's also a TC. And that shows right here. The, the marks we're concerned about most are A, B, C. And we're gonna turn the engine this way. It's called a right hand rotation. Um, this is 1-6 top dead center. We don't really need this mark, but it's good to know that it's in between A and C uh, in case you want to find it. But see, we're actually going to set our valves over here uh, at this mark. This mark is not top dead center. Most engines I've, most other engines I work on, you normally set it at uh, top center. 1-6 and you can adjust about half of the valves. You turn it over another rotation and you can adjust the other half. Um, with the Cummins you have to go through and set each individual injector on the order or you know in the order that they fire. So it's good to know the firing order. A Votag instructor taught me how to uh, remember it and this was way back a long time ago but uh, funny what will stick with you. But he said if I was a 25 year old man and I was looking for a girlfriend and one came along that was 15, I'd say, well, that's too young. And if another one came along that was 36, I'd say, well, that's too old. But if one came by that was 24, I'd say that's just right. And somehow that stuck with me, but it's 15, 36, 24. One five three six two four. I mean, it's uh, there's there's other ways to remember it, but that's how I remember it. But we're going to be going in the firing order, V S or A. Mine has A on it. When we go to A, we're going to look at this little chart here, and they show a right hand rotation engine and a left hand. Um. How do you know what you got? Well, you look at this table here. It says if you got a right hand, this is your firing order. Okay, so we're, we're, we've got a right hand rotation. Also, you're going to turn the engine, if you're standing in front of it, you're going to turn the, you're going to turn the accessory drive to the right, or clockwise. So that's how you're going to set it. Before I pulled the rocker boxes off of this engine, I set it to A, and I made sure I was on cylinder number one. The way you can tell if you're on cylinder number one is both rocker arms on that cylinder will be loose. Um, the injector will be down. So I set it there before I took it apart that helps me to figure out where I'm at it, it would it you, you come across a you could either be on compression on or uh, top center or you would actually be on the power stroke of a or the power stroke of you'd be on the power stroke of one or you'd be on the power stroke of six you can start anywhere in this and just continue forward like say you're on 
A with, with number six open, but it's always easier for me to start at the top. I might have to turn the engine one more revolution, but um, it makes it, it just makes it easier on, on me. So when I get to that point, I'm gonna set the injectors on three. I'm not gonna set the valve though, because I like to have the injector on that cylinder set first to take up any slack that there might be in the rocker arm or the, the rocker shaft, anything like that. So we'll start out at A, we'll set injector three, uh, we'll rotate to B, and then we'll set injector on six. Then I will set valves on three. After that's done, we'll move on to C and we'll, I'll set injector two. I'll set the valves on six, uh, so on and so forth. We're gonna go through it that way. And then after I get done with C here and I've adjusted the injector on five and the valves on one, I'll go ahead and rotate back to A, same direction, and then I'll go ahead and adjust the valves on five. That, that's just a, in, in my opinion, that's a better way to do it. Um, now they are dial indicator. This this tells you your this tells you your plunger stroke, and you measure that at the spring on the actual top of the injector and I'll get some video of that. But what we're gonna have is, uh, if, if we do it, we have aluminum rockers and hot and cold doesn't matter on it. You got the same setting on your injector travel. You got 0 .170, that's the number we need to remember. And that's in inches, so. Um, Hot or cold with aluminum housing doesn't matter. If you do have a cast iron, there is a difference. When the cast iron's cold, it's 175, and when the cast iron's hot, it's 170. Plus or minus 1,000. And then on your intake and exhaust clearance, you're gonna go 11 and 23. Sounds pretty simple. Okay, that's basically what we what we need to know to go start on the truck and adjust the valves, the injectors, and we're going to get to it. I have my tool set up on injector three here. Um, see the plunger? I'm moving it up and down there, sitting top of that injector plate or the little flat part of the injector and it's got clearance it doesn't hit the rocker arm you don't want that rod to hit the rocker arm at any point because it will throw off your readings now what we need to do since we're in the right position we're at number one six vs or a on our uh, Accessory drive fully, that's where the marks are on it. So what we're gonna do, we got this tool we can set on the rocker arm. And we're gonna push this down until the injector hits the bottom. And then we're gonna adjust with the set screw here. Hopefully this turns out where you can see what's going on. Let's uh, dial, set our dial to zero here. And then we're going to count. There's one, that's point one. And then 70, that's point one seven zero right there. So now we take our screwdriver. Actually, we can release this pressure off this tool and we'll adjust that to, I think if we go to like just a little over 69, that gives us a, we're going to 
right now. It's going to move just a bit. Let's see. Let me see. Come loose. Looks like we're sitting on 70. I'll check it. Make sure we didn't move our zero. Our zero's right on the money. We go one and 70. And when we get back there, there'll be a little oil under there, but it'll smash you out. I'll push down on that. Move just a bit, so I, I like that. That's real good. So now we bar the engine over to the next mark. It'll be B or two five VS. set the valves on three and we set the injector on six so three is the one we just adjusted so let's turn this tool over and put it on six in the back Push zero to gauge. And count turns, there's one. Okay, we're setting about one seventy four. Just a little over 169, and we should be able to tighten that up and call it good. Seventy. It's just a little bit on the high side there. I can't hardly hold that one from turning. I'm gonna tighten it. Pretty good. Right at one seventy. Check our zero. It's off just a smidge. And that 
that throat is off just a smidge there. Just a little, little shy 170. You got 1,000 clearance, but. Whenever you lift that, you get oil under that cap and that changes the way it sits a little bit. Sure when the oil's hot. Okay, we're hitting zero good. Sixty nine and a half. I'd say that's close enough for me. So now we're going to just Preloaded. There's spring tension under that plunger pushing up against this rack, keeps everything tight. So now is when we set our valves on the cylinder. Yeah, tight. Okay, so if we use the Dial indicator method, we get 11 and 23 on feeler gauge settings. Intake is in the middle of the head. Tighten it down until you get pretty good drag there. Because when, when you tighten your set, it will loosen just a little bit. Should have a little drag on it. Set your feeler gauge under it. So I get it under the middle good there. Make sure you're not bumping into something. Tighten it down. You got a good drag. Processor. We set injector three. We skip valves. We set injector six. We set valves on three. So I'm going to crank the engine over to C or three, four VS, and we're going to set injector on two, and the valves on six. Thank <laughs> you. 
Shaky. Black one. That's too far. I need to go one and seventy. Release that now we're set about sixty-nine. One six nine and then tighten the set nut. Indicator will show you when you make a mistake, that's for sure. That's why I like this method. Uh, the torque method, there's a lot that could happen. Let's see, we're just a little under 70, but if we squeeze the oil out of this just by lifting back on it, uh, follower, it goes right to 70. That's, that's exactly where I like them, just a little on the Just right at 70 or just a little under. Um, 1.170 is what I should be saying. Okay, so now we set valves on 6. Interesting to me. I don't know if it's interesting to everybody, but uh, this is one of those things. It's hard to look at a book sometimes and figure it all out. And uh, one of the reasons I'm making this video is I've struggled through it a time or two and made mistakes. Did it twice. Fact is, I've had a couple of little things happen here today that. Shouldn't have happened. Um, just like the left hand, right hand rotation on this engine. I mean, you, you run into these little things and you're doing this on your own and you make a decision. And, 
Usually it's one fifty fifty things, you're either right or you're wrong. And what's happened sometimes is you're wrong. And you make mistakes, it cost you lots of money. So I'm making this hoping to save some people some engine parts, tools. I tell you something happened to me one time I was doing an overhead on this same truck. Wasn't that long ago, it was probably, I don't know, four or five years ago, it was just a maintenance thing. Wasn't nothing wrong with the truck. Came in the shop running. Now I'm gonna run the overhead on it. Been a while since I've done it. And you can tell when they need it. I mean they've not tried it quite as crisp and you can kind of fight with some of these sometimes. But anyway, I use a I use a pipe uh, get back to my story. I get I use a pipe wrench to turn the motor over. I'll show you here in a minute or you can see it. Here in a sec. Good to do on that one. I use a pipe wrench to bar the motor over when I'm doing this adjustment. Well, I got everything set. I was happy with myself, you know, got everything done. Jumped in the truck. Cranked her up, or tried to. I heard a big thunk. I had left the pipe wrench on the pulley. I use this truck just about every day. Um, every, about every day I've got a job with a backhoe. Usually it goes, unless I'm on a big one, I leave it out there for a while. But a lot of my stuff is one day here, one day there, so I rely on this thing just about as much as a backhoe. So anyway, this is probably on a Saturday afternoon, Sunday, probably had a job lined up Monday. Well, it took the chunk. It took a chunk out of it. Didn't bend the pipe wrench. Pipe wrench is fine, but it, it busted the accessory drive pulley. And this is a 1973 engine. Came out with the truck. It's got the serial numbers approved. So it's got V belts on the water pump. All the newer motors. The big cam pulley will fit it, and you can find those. Small cam with the V belt on the water pump, a little bit harder to find. So I scrambled around, finally found one the next that Monday. But uh, it's one of those things when you get in a hurry. Sometimes you think you got it all figured out. You don't. And uh, about the time you're really confident in yourself, that's when you better watch out. Is what I found. So, you live and learn. That's another one of them expensive mistakes I made. You guys can laugh at it. I thought it was funny later too, but boy, when it happened, I was a sick dog. Okay. I'll show you my... Just to give you an idea of what I'm doing when I turn this motor. There's a little C there, it's kind of hard to see with the. I don't know this. There's a mark here, a mark here, and there's a timing mark on the case. It's underneath this air conditioner bracket. It's a little, just a little ear coming off the case. It doesn't have to be 100% on that mark to do what I'm doing here because this is not critical. It's in the middle of the circle on that cam wherever it's at so it's it's not going to move uh, say you bump it a little bit one way or the other. Not that critical. As long as you're within you know I say a quarter inch of that mark you should be good to set 
wherever the book says to, to sit. So, and then uh, here's a pipe wrench. This is not the best way to do this. It kind of tears your pulley up a little bit. But when the book says right hand rotation, this is right hand rotation. This is at, this is C, and this is 1 6 top center. And that's what I was showing you in the book. It's not there, but A is coming up. Easy way to do this is to go around and paint these marks right before you do this job. Kind of see my paint there. Um, maybe I don't know what you're seeing. Eight. You might be seeing something else. But there's A, there's Mark, there's Time and Pointer. Make it a habit of taking that off of the pulley every time. Okay, now we just set valves on six. We just set the injector on two. So we're at this point right here. We just hit C. We hit two and six. Now we're A again, and we're going to hit number four on the injector. And we're going to adjust the valves on two. Step by step by step. stuff takes time. I mean, if you're really in a big hurry, probably not a good day to run your overhead. Especially if you're doing it yourself. You don't want to rush through this. And there's mechanics that will rush through these jobs. And I don't understand them. Most of them get paid by the air. Not to say they ought to waste time on your clock, but they ought to do it right. I thought I'm getting a different reading every time I move that. So that tells me something's loose on my setup here. Or, I see what's happening. Earlier I said don't let your rocker arm hit that lever, that's what's going on there. Not too close. There we go. Shoot. That's more consistent. Anytime you don't get the same reading every time you bought them, something's moving. You need to make sure you can get at least a couple of Solid zeros. There's one and seventy. There's probably somebody that's way smarter than me about these engines and they'll probably tell you this is a bad way to do this. That the torque method's better. And they may be right. I'm not a full-time mechanic. on my own stuff all the time. I do occasionally take a side job. I do a lot 
lot of work for my dad. I do some welding. See, after I lifted that up, I got oil in that push rod tube cup, and it actually moved it. That time it ain't squeezing out. I may need to reset. Check zero. Torque method on these motors will work. I've used it. If I was in a hurry today, I'd be using it today. I probably wouldn't be filming either if I was in a hurry today. Set the valves on one or two. We just did the injector on four. This will be number two. We've already set this injector, so this one's preloaded. Eleven on the intake, twenty-three on exhaust. Got that in tight for some odd reason. Yikes. Pretty good drag there. I don't set the crossheads every valve setting. Um, I think it's a good idea to check them every now and then, but they generally, when I have messed with them, they generally seem to be not far out of whack. Anytime you do a major head tear down or anything like that, you have to set them. But when I'm running an overhead, I don't generally mess with crosshead adjustments. It's easier to do that if you've got the rocker covers off. set on two, injector set on four, now we're going to move to timing mark B or 25VS, that's that number one injector and valves on four. Okay. 
straight around here. That's my first rod. what we're looking for. We're looking for zero and point one seventy inches. Now we can set the valve on number four. In takes eleven. If you do the dial indicator method, if you don't, it's different. 14 and Some people take a white marker and go through here and mark which ones they've, that's a little tight, mark which ones they've set, but the method we're using, well, I made it worse. Come on now. I just adjusted my injector on one, my valve's on four. 
Now I'm going to go back to C and I'm going to adjust my injector on 5, valve on 1, and then I'm going to jump back up here and go back to A and we're going to adjust valves on 5. Don't adjust the valves on that cylinder unless your injector's set. Injector five. Pop back on this thing and get it out of the shop. Zero, we got one tenth, and then we're back to one point one zero point one seventy. There we go. All right, we can adjust the valves on number one. We're almost done. Just glad at this point it's not a V12. Although, it'd be a neat challenge. I ran the racks on some Detroit diesel 871s once or twice. I gotta say, Cummins is my favorite. These, this is one of my favorite engines of all time. Just 
Um, there's better engines, I'm sure. But as far as just being a pretty rugged old working engine, that's a good that's a good one. Everything on a small cam can be bolted. Basically, all your accessories, all your if if you wanted to swap this out to be a big cam, everything on the front of that motor would bolt onto the big cam. And I don't know; it may go all the way up to like the low flow big cam fours. Which, if you did that, you'd have to have a different radiator. But the big cam four can be converted over to uh, high flow. Makes for a better engine. Okay, number one set. The only one we got left now is a valve set on five. through the engine twice it's pretty easy to understand where you're at on the setting on this thing so I don't need to paint mark them anyway some people do it's, it's easier for you to do it, do it that way Don't recommend stopping in the middle of the job and going to eat lunch. If you did that, you might want to mark where you're at. Once again, I'm going to check and make sure all my push rod tubes are seated in the sockets at the bottom. They should be. But that was another problem I had one time. I actually had the heads off of my motor when I put it back together. Push rod tube got between two of the cam followers at the bottom. And it busted the cam followers. It didn't take but one turn of the engine and it did it. So, I'm going to double check that. Um, but basically, it's ready for valve covers. Um, get all the piping back on it. And hopefully, she'll run. <laughs> 